welcome to Steve McDonald's Arts and Crafts. Now, one of the things that I'm asked an awful lot about is how to mix and measure your resin the most efficient way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show, I know this might sound quite basic, but actually this is the foundation of everything that we do with resin. Because if we don't mix it properly or we don't get the right measurements, then what happens is it's not going to cure or you're going to get lots of bubbles. I'm going to just do this quick video showing you the method. Now, some methods ask you to do it by weight and that's pretty standard. But if you're doing it by weight, make sure you've got some very accurate scales. And I use digital scales all the time because you can tear them and you can make sure that you've got the exact weight. But keep them on a flat level surface as well, because if not, you're not going to get an accurate reading. So I like the stainless steel ones because I can wipe that clean. But if I want to, I can pop a little bit of a silicon mat on there, then put my measuring cup whatever I'm measuring into and then if there's any spill I can get what I want but don't forget always tear the amount that is on there first because if not you're going to get an inaccurate measurement now I'm not going to use measured resin today by weight I am going to be using by volume because this is the one that people seem to have the most problem with and I'm going to be using either one of these types of jugs I find that these jugs their measurements are really really accurate and that is so important I used to use the ones that you could get off Amazon that were like this but had the measurements on and I found that they were so far out when I measured them against other things. So I stopped using those and I try and stick to this type of jug all the time when I'm measuring out my resin. The other thing is they clean up really easily by using a baby wipe. Now, often with these measurements, you can't actually see once you've poured in because it's difficult to see them now, the measurements on there. So, for instance, if I want to make 80 mils of resin, I'll go along there. I'll mark a line with a, a permanent pen normally with 40 and 80. And then I know how to pour up to them. I know I've got to pour up to there and I know I've got to pour up to there so that it's accurate. Now, once I've done that, those marks, it's silicon after all, so it's not going to be permanent on there. Those marks, along with that glitter, will just wash off with a baby wipe. Let's give that one a little bit more of a clean. If you haven't got baby wipes, I know I've spoken about this in my previous Reddit videos, but my goodness me, you've got to get baby wipes. And the alcohol-free wipes as well. Never get wipes with alcohol in, because they'll dry out and destroy your moulds. And your jugs over time. I mean, nothing lasts forever, but we want to get it as last as long as we possibly can. Look how much cleaner that is. The other thing is, when you're measuring, get down like this to eye level when you're measuring it. Because if not, what you're doing is you're looking at it like this from an angle and your measurements aren't going to be as accurate. So if you're working on a desk that raises, just raise it up or hold it up. But keep it on a flat surface and check your lines. Always read the instructions of your resin as well because some say that you need two parts part A or two parts part B to one part part A or one part part B. Most of the resins that I use are equal parts and that does make life a lot easier. But try and be as accurate with your measurements as possible because that way you're going to always get the best results. The other thing is never use cold resin. If you've been storing your resin in a cool place, don't use cold resin because it's not going to mix very well. These two bottles here, they're actually at room temperature now because I've been in my studio a while and the heating has been, it's quite warm in my studio today. But if they hadn't been and they had been cool or below good room temperature, which is about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 70 degrees Fahrenheit then I would go and I would immerse these into warm water before pouring them or pop them on a radiator, which you shouldn't really do to warm it through for a little while to make sure that they're actually quite warm. And then I give them a light shake to mix up that warmth in there because cold resin thickens is gonna produce a lot more bubbles. Don't overheat it because you can get flash curing if that happens when you mix it up. So you don't want it boiling hot. You just want it at about 70 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's get to the mixing and how I mix. I will mix with whatever I've got that's nice and clean. Make sure it is nice and clean because then you're not gonna contaminate the resin. Now I have probably got, I hate to think how many of these types of mixing stick and I actually love them. I use them all the time. <laughs> And they clean really easily with a baby wipe and they scrape around the edges of the pots and get to the bottom. They're brilliant. Now I've got lots of these and the reason I've got lots of these is they come free with a lot of the resin that you get from J Diction resin. 
and I'm using Jay Dixon's resin at the moment. So some of them have still got the name on it. Quite a lot because I'm really impressed and pleased with the Jay Dixon resin. So I've got a lot of these. But if you haven't got these, you can use these lolly sticks. Now, a lot of purists say, oh, these sticks produce a lot of bubbles. But to be honest, on that, I don't think they do produce a lot of bubbles. In fact, I've never seen a stick really produce many bubbles. If you leave it in, some micro bubbles might come out. But when you've finished mixing your resin, don't throw the stick away. Take a baby wipe, wipe it over, put it down somewhere flat, and that resin that's in there will cure. That will seal that, so next time it's nice, and it's not all bumpy. And these are really quite cheap. I use the smaller ones if I'm mixing up a really small amount of resin. Now that brings me on to people that mix up tiny amounts of resin and then complain that it won't cure. If you were to mix up, say, just a tiny thimble full of part A and part B, mix that up, most resins aren't going to cure because you need to mix with most resins a minimum of about 30 mil in total. So 15 part A, 15 part B. Some you can get away with 10 part A, 10 part B. You need that to get that exothermic reaction moving along and curing. If you're going to mix up a little bit, have something to the side that you want to cast as well, because that way you're going to get a much better result by mixing up a minimum of 30 mils of resin. And 30 mils of resin in total isn't a great deal. It's only that much on that little mixing pot. Half part B, half part A. You're going to get much better results. It's going to mix more thoroughly and also your measurements are going to be much more accurate and it's going to cure. Let's get to the actual mixing and I'll show you how I mix. Now why? mix today I am going to be using in another project probably off camera so I'm not going to be throwing this away so please don't worry about that and never waste anything you know how frugal I am. I've done a close-up here of this Shearcrafts silicon mixing jug. Now this project isn't sponsored by Shearcrafts at all they don't even know I exist but I do find that theirs are quite accurate and I'm pouring this in slowly. Now I always go to the top of my little black line that I've drawn on this because I find that that way I'm consistent. If I don't go to the top, then I would always go to the bottom. But I do always go to the top. So I've got my part A in and now I'm putting my part B in. Some people say you should always put your part A in first and then your part B. To be honest, I do whichever one I get to first. I never find it makes a difference. What I do find makes a difference is always make sure that you put the same top on the same bottle. Because if not, if you put the part B top on the part A bottle, it's going to cure up, you're never going to get it off. And this is the speed that I mix my resin at at all times. Regardless of which resin it is that I'm mixing, I always mix at this speed. Any faster, and you're just going to introduce a load of bubbles to it. And you don't really need to be mixing faster than this. You're not beating an egg, you're not making an omelette. So you just need to ensure that they're all combined. And you can tell whether they're combined or not as you're mixing, because you can see the clarity uh, and there's no streaks going through it. I always scrape my scrapers and I always scrape around the sides and of the bottom. Because you don't want any part B or part A sticking to the sides or the bottom. Because that's also going to give you problems. What I also do is I usually listen to some music. So a song that lasts four minutes. And then when it starts and when it finishes I know that I've been mixing for four minutes. Can you see it's quite cloudy at the minute? I just want to say an awesome thank you to all my members whose names are coming up now. I hope you're enjoying everything that we're doing at the moment. It is a great fun and great time. So now I've been mixing quite a bit longer. You can see that's cleared up and I'm getting towards the end of this mixing session. Now I go in circles, sometimes in figure or eights, but I always try and keep a consistent mix. Then I leave my mixed resin for probably five minutes before I use it and in that time I normally have a bit of a clear up using a baby wipe. Thank you to all the awesome people that got me a coffee last month. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. The outpouring of love was just amazing. I always clean my silicon tools up when they're wet rather than letting it dry. I find it's much easier and you get a much cleaner result. If you've enjoyed this video and you found it to be really useful, please boop that like button. It really does help my videos to get out there. Hit that subscribe button and most of all, be safe but enjoy your resin. Take care. Bye.